Hey everyone, we are back for another week. I'm Jeff, I play old, retro, and obscure stuff on here. All to raise money for extra life. You can see the details down below. I'm raising money for the Toronto Hospital for Sick Children year-round. In November, I will do a 24-hour gaming stream fundraising the entire time. I'll stay awake, I'll play old games, I'll have fun. It'll be great. You can check out the details uh, down below in my Twitch info. I'd really appreciate it if you took a look. Uh, not many details on my fundraising page right now because I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. But uh, various incentives, milestones, and details will get added throughout the year. And I will probably talk about them on my regular streams as well. Uh, last week, if you were here, you saw me play some, well, a game on a Commodore 64 that I built. And uh, got a little bit of a connection problem here. I'm back, okay. Had a bit of a connection hiccup there, but everything looks all right. Okay, so last week we played on the Commodore 64. We're gonna play on the Commodore 64 again this week. Uh, I've actually done some really interesting uh, digital archeology. span so what I have done is uh, I've grabbed, uh, well, backstory, I guess. So years ago, uh, I helped out cleaning out a storage room at a public school in London, Ontario. Uh, the school, uh, Lorna Public School, if you're familiar with London, Ontario, it's closed now. But at the time, uh, and this is probably why it ended up being closed, uh, there were way less students than the capacity the school had. So they were clearing out a bunch of stuff, uh, and there was an old tech shop room kind of thing uh, that I was basically uh, voluntold to help clean out. My father was a teacher there at the time. And I went through tons of stuff. There's lots of junk. There was old art projects left by students, uh, and one of the things I found there was a Commodore 64 computer, a monitor, a disk drive, uh, and tons and tons and tons of floppy disks. Now, the floppy disks I still have. Honestly, I have all the hardware still. Uh, I'm using a newer Commodore 64 rather than uh, the 1982 model that I had before. But other than that, it's all exactly the same. And uh, I never really went through the disks. They were full of old educational software, school projects, that kind of thing. And I really didn't pay a lot of attention to them. Uh, mostly what I did was I, I played my own games that I'd had from before and bought off eBay. Uh, and I used some of the disks that were empty to uh, build my own I load my own software onto. Uh, but there was tons and tons of stuff that was already there. And uh, this weekend, I went through a lot of it. I uh, used a piece of equipment called a Zoom floppy, which allows me to connect to an original Commodore disk drive, uh, hook it up to my computer, and uh, take a look at what's on disks, write to disks, that kind of thing. And uh, I spent a lot of time looking through it, uh, sorting through things. I'm not quite finished yet, uh, but I've got a pretty good selection here, as you can see in front of me, of uh, programs and disks that I pulled off of these disks. And they're all educational things. Uh, and a lot of them, believe it or not, were specifically written for uh, Ontario public schools or even more specifically, London, Ontario public schools and elementary schools specifically. It's, it's generally uh, early years stuff. But, uh, yes, we're, we're going to learn addition and subtraction and maybe some spelling rathologic. Uh, but the point is, a lot of this software has never been preserved anywhere else. Uh, and I have started undertaking the project to uh, 
pull all this stuff off the floppy disks. Uh, floppy disks degrade over time. They suffer from something called bit rot. They're a magnetic medium, and eventually uh, the error checking mechanisms that are in place on them, uh, they fail, and you can't pull the software on it, off of it anymore. So there is a lot of stuff that I found. Probably about one in five disks I went through so far. Uh, have issues where I, I either can't read the disk at all or there are certain sections of it I can't read and I was only able to salvage uh, certain things. I'll just show you. Uh, for example, like here's an example of one of them. They're floppy disks uh, and they say things like, you know, junior math on them. Uh, and you don't know what's really on them. Uh, a lot of them, this one has a sleeve with a printout of what's actually on the disk but it's a sleeve for the wrong disk it's not actually what's on this one so they're mostly a mystery i haven't really looked at any of these in detail i mostly just confirmed which ones were specifically made for london ontario schools and uh, collected those ones so we're we're gonna look through a lot uh, there's something special we'll look at later on that I thought was really great. We've got some creative writing projects from uh, students from the 80s we're going to look at uh, that have survived after all this time. Uh, but basically, we're just going to go through these programs that I pulled off and uh, see what kinds of games kids were playing in a elementary school in the 80s, uh, early 90s at the very latest. So uh, let's see what we got. Like you see, it's the, the London Board of Education. Amazing graphics. So this is called balancing. OK, we've got a, a programmer here. Uh, and uh, maybe I'll use my sleuthing skills at some point and track down some of these people, and uh, maybe we can get them on a stream sometime to talk about it. But uh, it'd be interesting to see where all these programmers are now. So I'm not quite sure what we're supposed to... Okay, here we go. The object of the exercise is to balance the arm of the balance beam using Jill and Joey. Okay, sounds easy enough. Three levels of difficulty... Uh, I'm going to go for simple first because I don't actually know how I'm supposed to balance them. But we'll see. Would I like instructions? I would like instructions. So a balance beam will appear on the screen with Jill placed on the left-hand side of the beam. You must balance the beam by telling me how far out on the right side I should place Joey. Remember, Jill and Joey weigh the same. Okay. All right, so if I want to balance the beam, I've got to put, I assume Jill is supposed to be at one. So I'll put Joey at one. Yes, yes, that's true. Um, I've actually been extremely careful about preserving these uh, because they don't make these floppies anymore. Uh, you can't get more of them. Uh, the only ones you can buy are old stock. There, There's no longer a single factory in the world that makes these floppy disks. So I've been very careful to preserve them because I need them because uh, I don't have the hardware to, to emulate uh, one of these floppy drives. I'll just actually, I still got it here. You can see it in the background here. Here's the actual floppy drive. Let me just pull out the cables because you don't need to see those. But this beast is the Commodore 1541 floppy drive that I've been pulling all these off with. Uh, it's even got a fun little don't copy that floppy warning on it. But uh, I've got one of these, an actual drive. I do not have anything to emulate precisely uh, a drive like that. Uh, some some software relies on Am I back? Did we lose everyone? We might have lost everyone.
Hey, we're back. Uh, I'm not sure what the problem is with my connection tonight. Uh, no one else is here, so uh, it shouldn't be a, a busy line. But uh, hopefully we won't have too many more connection issues like that. Regardless, the point is I protected these disks. They're all in really good condition. I've kept the drive clean. Uh, I've kept, uh, you're supposed to place a, a placeholder card in the drive to stop the heads from rattling. Uh, I've taken very good care of these, even if I haven't actually uh, archived all the stuff off them yet. So I'm in the process of doing that. Uh, anyway, let's see if we can get uh, super. Okay, did that, did that balance it? Okay, balance, the beam is balanced. Okay. So I assume that at this easy level, we're always just going to have to match the exact one that uh, Jill is on. Let's see. Terrific. So that this is balancing. This is uh, this is what elementary kids were doing. Let's see if we can uh, let's reset this and go at a higher difficulty level. Maybe it'll make the beam different lengths. It's pretty great, right? Uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna reset this program. We'll start. We'll try another difficulty. You know, that's the London Board of Education logo. It's the same logo that you saw on that little uh, don't copy things on this floppy drive warning. Okay, Paul. Let's try, uh, let's try the highest difficulty level. Oh, it's a test. Okay, so it's going to try questions from all of them. All right. Yep, correct. It's got a Oh, I see. There's there's two gills. <laughs> okay. Uh well, I can only place one Joey though. Uh Oh, okay. I can place two Joeys. Six and six is where we got to put them. Uh, this is apparently just what balancing is. Um, it's not too exciting, but someone wrote this program specifically for schools in London, Ontario. Uh, yeah, fun. Let's try another one. Let's try brain warp. We're just going to go down the list. Brain warp. Book's going to open. Okay, this is a good font too. No sound in either of these games so far. I was out of their budget, I guess. Uh, yes, I would love instructions. I have six faces. I try to make each one all one color. I can switch rows or columns from one square to another. Try to complete it in as few moves as possible. The squares are numbered one, two, three across the top and four, five, six across the bottom. So like a Rubik's cube. What? They should have more clear instructions for this. Um, what am I supposed to even type here? First square, second square. Oh, I see. Row. These instructions are unclear. Moving on. Castle attack sounds more fun. Castle attack. Ooh. 
Ooh, there's even a castle here. My dear lords and ladies, welcome to the medieval game of castle attack. The game involves two players. One player is the attacker besieging the castle. The other player is the defender trying to protect the castle. Okay, so we may not be able to play this one. Uh, but I want to see how it works first. So, oh, that's a great cursor. Uh, am I a lord or a lady? I'll be a lord. Lord Jeff, you'll be given your battle plans shortly. Who will be the defender? Uh, Bort. Bort is a lady. Lady Bort. Okay. Game board will appear when you press the space bar. Okay. Lady Bort must defend the castle from attack. The castle looks like this. Must also defend the castle keep. It looks like this. Lady Bort will have five knights anywhere on the board. Lord Jeff, you will have nine pieces of siege equipment. Also, Lord Jeff, you will have nine knights to lead your attack. One attack strategy might look like this. Lord Jeff, it is time to locate your men and equipment on the game board. Tell Lady Bort to go behind the computer screen while you set your plan. Okay. This game is probably really cool with another person. Uh... It looks like it's a Stratego kind of thing. That's cool. Um, again, it's two player. So uh, maybe if I get a guest star sometime, we'll play that. But that is really cool that someone made that for schools in a little Canadian city. Checker challenge. Again, not a lot of sound in these games. Okay, one checker has already been placed on the checkerboard. Place nine more checkers on different squares so that there are four checkers on each of the five lines. Here are four checkers on one line. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Boring. Chopper one. <laughs> Wizards checkers. <laughs> uh, well, I've got Archon we'll have to play sometime, uh, which is kind of a predecessor to Battle Chess, if you remember that. What's Chopper one? Dan Nielsen. Another name I could try and track down. Ooh. Uh, first of all, let's get the student instructions. You have to move a helicopter and match up the contents of the boxes on the bottom of the screen. To do this, you use the letters blah, blah, blah. Tell the helicopter where to go. Here comes <laughs> Chopper 1. Wow. Wow. So this is actually called uh, pet ski art. What they're drawing this with. So these are these are characters. Uh, later computers would use something called ASCII, but uh, people would get very creative making art out of these uh, characters that are built into uh, the computer itself. Uh, in the character ROM chip. 
uh, which uh, means that the graphics don't have to be created, they just need to be assembled, uh, as opposed to sprites, which are graphics you actually have to edit pixel by pixel when you want to add them to your game. So these are actually built out of characters just like, uh, just like letters. When you move chopper one so that you match up the boxes, always start on the left. Move the helicopter so it lands right on the middle of the landing pad in one of the boxes on the left, and it will flash. Then you'll have to make the helicopter take off again, move to the right, and land on the box you think matches the first box. Yeah, battle chess rocks, uh, and so does Archon. So let's do fun with shapes and things. Uh, I want the chopper, chopper to go fast. Okay, okay. How do I make it? Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pick this guy up. Here we go. We're going to pick it up, I think. Okay, we've got it, I think. We're going to go up. Oh, wrong. What do you mean wrong? Let me pick it up. Harsh. OK. Am I like not actually moving the box? I just have to tap them. How does this work? Yeah, I guess you just tap them. Uh, yeah, this game is terrible. Next. <laughs> what do we got here? Concentration Caterpillar. That sounds good. So again, uh, you you folks are seeing these games for the first time. These games have been played since probably the 80s. So this is pretty cool. Uh, I would like instructions. We're going to get the letters in sequence, then enter back in the same order. If I do this, my caterpillar will grow. If I enter it wrong, the caterpillar gets smaller. Try to get 10 segments. When I get zero, I lose. Okay. My eraser is, okay, I can't use just the delete key. All right. I can use it here. All right. Come in. Does not let me capitalize. Doesn't let me capitalize my name. All right. My name is Jeff. You're welcome. Nine sequences, please. I am really ambitious. Uh, letters, please. Five segments. Z, D, X, U, T, D, J, N. Okay. Oh, it's a memory game. Whoops. Uh, where's my at? Z, D, J, U, X and I lost it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, so I got two right. All right. Next, concentration, another memory game. Uh, maybe I wasn't the brightest of kids. Uh, maybe that's what the problem is. Concentration caterpillar again. It's the same one. All right. So uh, that one was on two different disks, uh, named different things. So creepy creatures. Open that book. Please wait. We're waiting. See how creepy these creatures are. Okay, okay. Oh, 
he doesn't look too creepy. Okay. Okay, again, more Petsky art. This program asks you to identify imaginary creatures that have the same characteristics or traits. For example, all the creatures of one type might have tails or dots. You will be shown four creatures that have one or more traits in common. Then you will be shown four creatures that lack those traits. Okay, and you got it's a spot the difference game. Then you, you will then be shown four more creatures. Your job is to identify the creatures in this group, which have the same common trait as the creatures in the first group of four. Okay, type the numbers on the keyboard. After you've correctly identified the creatures, the computer will ask you to pick their common trait from a list that it will show you. Okay, so it's going to show us four things. These are the snards. Uh, they all have tails. One of them looks like a sperm. Two of them look like sperms. Three of them look like sperms. The other one may be a bacteria. Uh, what else? They all have heads. Uh, only two of them have eyes. Only one of them has a mouth. Uh, they're not all the same color. All right, I'm going to say that tails are what makes snards. Does that seem right to everyone? None of these are snards. Okay, yeah, no tails. I think I'm confident that snards have tails. Let's pick the snards. Okay. So one is a snard. Three is a snard. Four is a snard. That's all the snards. And we actually saw all those, so maybe it's just a memory game. Maybe it'll get more complicated later. Let's find out. All snards have, uh, and it's, pick the numbers of the true facts. Oh, so all of them. Uh, so first off, they all have tails. Or is that, that it? Okay. Wow, you did it. Nice work, everyone. What are we going to see now? All of these are spins. Okay. So they've all got little eyeballs, I guess. None of these are spins. Okay, look at the last screen again. Spins. These guys have solid eyeballs. Or nipples, maybe? None of these. Oh, it's giving us a different group of none of these are spins. That's cool. Okay. Which of these are spins? So that one was definitely there. Two and four and i don't think three is one so i picked all the spins woohoo so i think they all have eyeballs or i guess dots one or more dots in the tail no one or more dots i think is is what it is great okay uh, what else? What else? Uh, well, they didn't have filled in bodies. They didn't have tails. So I guess nine. Oh, I guess that's it. All right. All of these are plimps. Cool. Uh, they're all solid colors. None of these are plimps. Yeah, it's going to be solid colors. Which are plimps? Just three, I think. Picked all the plimps. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, so three, I guess, is filled in bodies. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Let's find another game.
Next is Crossword64. Uh, I am terrible at crosswords. Parkside High School, Dundas, Ontario. Uh, revised for Commodore 64 by Bennett Root. Brant Avenue School in Guelph, Ontario. So this must be like a, a high school student's project then. That's amazing. Yeah, give me the instructions. Okay. Yeah, this one's going to be rough. Uh, title. Word number one. Uh, oh, is it? Oh, it's for making a crossword. Robot. It is robot. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to make a crossword puzzle. Uh, I assume you would print it at the end of all this. Uh, cubic distance. Sounds exciting. John Obeda Jr. I do need the instructions, please. I'm imagining that I have a cube, which is divided into small cubes. I will choose one of these small cubes. You will then select 10 of the small cubes, one at a time. I will tell you how many units the center of your cube is from mine. I will be your only cue for figuring out which cube I have chosen. Oh, okay. Interesting. So it's like 3D Minesweeper. Yeah, let's do let's do four by four just to start. Four by four by four, I guess. Okay, so let's do one one one. Oh, one point four one. Interesting. So Yeah, it's it's supposed to be a cube, right? Not uh, a 3D shape with right angles. Um they they may be getting their terminology wrong here. Um also, I don't know the math for doing this. Um, it's been a long time since I've done any kind of... Oh, that's only one away. So one, two, three is only one away. So one, whoops, two, four. Oh, that's too far away. So one, three, three. Oh. One, three. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Two, one, three. How many guesses do I get? <laughs> okay. Did I do one, one, one already? Ten guesses. Okay. I'm not going to get this. Uh, I am a very bad visualizing thinking kind of person so this is like <laughs> this is great though uh i love that they they were making this software for for kids in schools um i'd love to know how much these programmers were getting paid to churn these out so one two one 
is one away. One 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 is what else is one away? One two three is also one away. So one two three. So we go one two two. Did I do one two two? I did not do one two two. Yay, okay. I can do it. Uh, this is really hard, though. Nine tries, so... <laughs> All right. Uh, that's great, though. That's actually a really good one. Uh, I'm not going to play it again, because if I keep going, I'm going to embarrass myself. But I'm just going to take the win and move on. Family and child. What is this? Clothing, food industry. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Is it an economic sim? <laughs> okay, okay. My, your family, my family. Families are made of mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, cousins, grandparents, and friends. Family is people living together, sharing, caring. Tom lives with an extended family of many adults and children. Lisa and her mother are a family all by themselves. This is a single parent family. Okay, this is pretty progressive for the 80s. Uh, is it going to say something wildly offensive? Peter lives with his mother. Mary lives with her father. Together, they make a blended family. Okay, I don't think that's what blended family means, but David lives with his father and mother. This is known as a nuclear family. <laughs> uh, is it just teaching me crap about... <laughs> Communication is listening and getting problems out in the open. Concern is you're interested and care for others. Confidence is being able to keep a secret so people trust you. Commitment is the lifetime acceptance of family members during periods of joy and sorrow. Cooperation is giving and taking and doing your share of the work. Consideration is being thoughtful of the rights and feelings of others. Companionship is the enjoyment which comes from the company of other family members quiz oh there is a there is a game aspect to this i'll be given 10 multiple choice questions and then seven which i have to unscramble uh after you type your answer press the return key yeah 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 I love this. This is amazing. Uh, let's see. Let's see. We got... I think... I think it's D. I think it's D, everyone. Very good. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is amazing, but we're going to move on. Uh, I don't need to learn more about families. <laughs> yeah, that one was going to pop up next, I'm sure. Uh, let's learn about fast food instead of families. Beep, beep. Fast food, okay. I can tell this is going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that was a burger. I don't know what that is. Pizza. Yeah, this is good stuff. 
This is this is going to be a good one. I can I can tell. Uh, I do want instructions. I always want instructions. You will be shown a suffix such as est. You will be given clues for three words. You make the suffix into a word by adding a letter or group of letters. You must get all three words to get some food. You get choices of toppings, flavor, etc. Amazing. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Uh, okay, a bird's home is a nest. Oh, it's still the tutorial. It's still the tutorial. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> a am I doing this now? Is it me now? Yeah, it is me now. Oh, I have to type the whole world. Or whole wor word, not world. I have to type the whole word. Okay. Used to carry water. It is a P-I-P-A-I-L. Pale. Pale. It is a pale. What dogs wag? Uh, not mine. My dog just has a nub. She puts all the energy into it that she would need to uh, wag a whole tail, though. Oh, I get a hamburger. Uh, everything. Give me all that good stuff. <laughs> okay. Lake. A desert. Oh, a dessert, not a desert. Uh, a shake, maybe? Usually have a shake with a meal, though, right? Not a shake, okay. Oh, obviously cake. Uh, I don't care for cake. Uh, just putting that out there. Wrong answer. Uh, like I just made. A mistake they're not gonna give me a burger this time are they or they're gonna they're gonna put something horrible on it I get french fries what do I want on them uh, we're gonna go with vinegar does the choice have like no impact whatsoever I just have to tell them what the choice is and imagine that I got the fries with vinegar okay okay Correct. I hope so. I, I hope I get something out. Maybe something that I can print on my dot matrix printer. And hang up on the wall and imagine, imagine that I got to eat at school today. I'm really hoping. Ooh, a soft drink. That's what that's... Oh, it's a straw. I thought maybe it was like uh, a cup of ramen or something with chopsticks, but uh, that's a straw. Uh, yeah. Uh, it really depends on brand here, though, doesn't it? Uh, I think probably I'm going to go with root beer, though. Not a root beer. A root beer. Let's see. The opposite of quiet is loud. Something in the sky. Yeah, yeah, okay. To think highly of yourself. This is not a verb, but I know what they're going for. Oh, onion rings. <laughs> Give me 20 onion rings. I wonder what would happen if I typed 100. A color. Clown. Small city. What the queen wears. Uh, 
burial shroud. Okay, what do I get? What do I get? A pie! Uh, oh, yeah, cherry. Uh, sorry, everyone, but I'm a, I'm a pecan pie hater. Disgusting. I will not apologize for my opinion. Not a jug, a mug. To pull, to pull a rug. We got, oh, a Sunday. Okay, okay. So I'm a tin roof Sunday person myself, which if you've never experienced it, uh, I feel sorry for you. Uh, it is a hot fudge sundae, but it has salted peanuts in it. So freaking good. Unit of time. It's an hour. The opposite of sweet is sour. Man, how much food am I going to get? Used to make bread. Flour. Oh, this one's a shake. Uh, if it's a shake, I'm going to go with vanilla. Unless it was actual malted chocolate, then that's pretty good. A noise is a sound. Discovered. Circular. Like I'm going to be after I eat all this stuff. Pizza. Uh, oh, deluxe. Deluxe is like three toppings. The cost of something is its price. To cut. Two times. Pizza with honey? I can't say if I've ever had pizza with honey. Uh, that, that would be unusual, I think. Where did you have that? Fried chicken. Uh, give me six. <laughs> okay, well, let me take more. Uh, just three then, I guess. What else was on it? Just like tomato sauce and cheese and honey? Okay. Whoops. Interesting. No, I have never heard of that. Uh, it sounds of dubious quality. I'm not. I'm not opposed to the idea of mixing sweet with savory, but uh, I don't. I don't know if I'd want honey on just a regular old pepperoni pizza. Mexican food. Uh, let's go for tacos. Good work. My meal is. A hamburger with everything. Yes. French fries and vinegar. A root beer soft drink. 20 onion rings. A cherry pie. A hot fudge sundae. A vanilla milkshake. A deluxe pizza. Three pieces of fried chicken. And a taco. <laughs> that was pretty good. So the, the payoff is that they just tell you all the food you ate. Uh, that's what we get. Like, actually. <laughs> Horrible. 
Grocery store. What's grocery store? Identifying operations. <laughs> oh, this one's fancy. Oh, man. The contrast is really bad here. I can't read this one. The yellow yellow text on white is a very poor choice. Whoever uh, decided to do that. Uh, horrible. Kala R. Okay. Yep. I do want instructions. The winner of the coin toss goes first. When your letter is flashing in a corner, it is your turn. Pick a pit to move markers from. The pit can't be empty. One marker at a time is placed in each pit going counterclockwise until all markers are gone. If on your own move, your last marker lands in your own pit, all markers opposite are placed in your... Oh, it's Kala. Okay. I have a Kala board, and I totally forget how to play this. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not going to learn tonight either. It's uh, it's an involved strategy thing. Uh, it's kind of like backgammon, like complexity-wise. Uh, make a face. Let's make a face. Love it, love it. Make a face. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Answer the questions correctly to make a face on this person. Look at the word problem. Seven butterflies, two flew away. How many were left? To answer the question, take the two numbers of the problem and subtract them. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Five bluebirds, three flew away. How many were left? Two. Select one of these. Oh, we get to choose. We get to choose. Uh, I'm going for the tacky tie. Yes. Three chipmunks, two ran away. How many were left? One. I love the little Petsky art chipmunk too, by the way. That's great. Select one of these. Uh, I'm going for the crazy eyebrows. Four cookies. Lois ate three. How many were left? Just one. Thanks a lot, Lois. Uh, we're going for the tiny little eyes. <laughs> Five rabbits. Three hopped away. How many were left? Two rabbits were left. One of these. We're, we're choosing the pig nose. <laughs> six green trees two fell down how many were left green trees do not fall down uh but uh the horrible mouth <laughs> yes 56 nuts a squirrel 835 see this is a step up in difficulty um so uh 21 Select one of these. What are these? I don't know what these are. Uh, is it hair? Is it supposed to be hair? What is going on here? I'm going for three because I don't know what those are. Oh, they're ears. Weird. All right. Five dogs, four ran away. How many were left? That's a great dog. Select one of these. Oh, it's like the inside of the ear. Oh, they're earrings. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair. <laughs> 44 leaves. 24 blew away. That's a great leaf. Select one of these. Uh, is that hair? Yes. This is great. Question nine. I have eight cents and I spent six cents. How many cents do I have left? Uh, what is this? Three. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> How many oranges? Oh, he, here's a trick question. There are four oranges. How many more? Oh, how many more oranges are there? I see. More oranges than apples. I thought they were just tricking me. There are three more oranges. Select one of the, What is this? I don't know. I'm going to go for three. Oh, it's a hat. I have completed one face. Good for us. This is a beautiful face. I do not want to play again. We're moving on to Mars Shot. Hey, you used to be able to get candy for pennies, even when I was a kid. Wild. Okay, okay. A little Canadian rocket going to Mars. Definitely seems realistic. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Hi, I'm a Martian from the planet Mars. What is your name? Glad to meet you, Jeff. Do you want the instructions? Yes. Okay. I will think of a number and you will have to guess that number. Although you are allowed 10 tries. I will tell you if your guess is high or low. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, we're going for the highest difficulty. Hard. We're going to go to Mars. You have a number, zero to a thousand. I know the most efficient way to do this. Um, you just divide it up. Shot number one was high. All right. Hi. Hi. Okay. Double bubble is great. 65 is still high. Okay. Sixteen was low, okay. Between sixteen and thirty-two. So between sixteen and thirty-two. That's uh twenty-four is halfway. Okay, between twenty-four and thirty-two. So twenty-seven. No, that's not halfway. I mean twenty so uh eight twenty-eight is halfway. Low between 28 and 32. Is it 30? So the answer is 31. Ta da! Congratulations. You have figured out the number I had selected. That's, I mean, that that's the only way to do it. Um, you just divide it in half every time. And I guess 10, 10 tries would get pretty much anything? I would think. Uh, if you're doing 1,000, yeah. Anyway, moving on to match them. What's match them? Is it just a memory game? None of these are using my joystick, by the way. Had my joystick plugged in the whole time and it's not letting me use it. Teacher's instructions. Yeah, let's hear the teacher's instructions. Uh, visual discrimination skills. Kindergarten or grade one level. Okay. Which face is different? Okay. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, this is terrible. Whoop, not one. Two. My bad. It's going to frown. All right. Uh, that game is not fun. Minefield 64 sounds promising, though. Yes, please. The object of this game is to get to the other side of the minefield. The mines are not visible, but are radioactive. Your Geiger counter will tell you how many mines are near you wherever you are. You start at the bottom left and must get to the top right. Okay. Okay. It's Minesweeper only, you're moving. So my Geiger counter is zero. All right. Still zero. It's one. It's two. Let's go back. Let's go back. This is still zero. We're going to play it super safe. Uh, if I can figure out... The keys I need to use here. So I guess we can just map it out. Um, ooh, two. Two there. Okay. So both of those are no good. So that should be safe. That one above me. Uh, how do we move left? J. Okay. 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 That is safe. Yeesh. I'm stressing out. Oh, we got two now. So we know this is safe. No, that's safe. No, that's safe. Uh oh, that doesn't make sense. Oh no, never mind. Never mind. So that must be safe, yep. Zero, that's good. Zero squares are good. I really wish I had a joystick for this one though. Whoops, that was not the one I meant to do, though. J, U. Okay, okay. I think if I die, 
it's going to be because I'm pressing the wrong key. Uh, Popped all the way back up to three. Getting out of here. Zero from here, though. <laughs> it's just Minesweeper. I played, I played way too much Minesweeper as a kid. To, to not understand the logic. I just have to get to the upper right. We're we're almost there. And you know, if we can we can map out the minefield, it'll do a service for for everyone else who has to come through. Whoop, that jumped up to 2. Want to get out of there. Ooh, that's 3. Not a safe place to be. H, that's zero, which means I can move there safely. Let's try and get there. Oh, okay, okay. Back up. Uh, B moves diagonally. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, like I said, the, the trickiest part is remembering which keys are which. Zero, okay. Which means both of these are safe. Which means that's safe. That's safe. That's safe. Ooh, three, okay. That was not the button I meant to push. <laughs> okay. So that one north of us has got to be the one. So that one is probably okay. Yeah. Which means that's good. That's good. That's good. No!
We were so close. Uh, that game's stressful. Yep. We almost did it. Oh, well. Miscellaneous 2. Oh, that's a whole disc, I think. Uh, Mr. Whiskers. Let's try Mr. Whiskers. Or just Whiskers. That's fine. We could be informal. No, that's a good one. That's pretty fun. Uh, with joystick controls, it would be way better. Uh... The the Commodore 64 doesn't have uh, it doesn't have arrow keys. It has two cursor keys, which go down. One goes down by default, and one goes right by default. And if you hold Shift, the, it reverses. Uh, so it's not e as easy as arrow keys. Drill and review activity for grade one pupils. Uh, since awareness of the keyboard is a component skill, it may be helpful for the child to have an older person do the actual typing. Uh, sure, what's it going to do? I just have to type the word. Oh, this is boring. Goodbye is right. I'm not going to play this. What's next? Noah's Ark. A good religious game for a public school. Perfect. Maybe? Maybe it's broken, this one. Oh no, here we go. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I know how it works. After each right answer, an animal will board the ark. Okay, help Noah fill up the ark. <laughs> Okay, there's the arc. Uh, and I guess the water is rising. Uh, okay. What's that, a turtle? Two turtles. Okay, good. I was worried. I was worried that only one would come on. Uh, all right. Oh, we got our elephants. <laughs> Snakes. After the shit they pulled. Bunnies? Sheep? I can't tell. Probably sheep. Swans? Or ducks? Can't quite tell. Uh, bears? Giraffes? Some of these are a stretch. Zebras, I guess. I have no idea what those are supposed to be. Okay. Is that it? We don't get to see the flood? No, I don't want to play again. I was hoping we get to see the deluge. Number sequence. 1 to 10. All right. Okay. Yep, I see it. Uh, is it going to do anything? Is it frozen? It's hard to tell sometimes. All right. Uh, I think that just froze. Uh, so we're going to skip the number sequence ones. There are like a bunch of them. 
Number train. Okay, the Ontario Educational Software Project, 1983. Uh, give me the student instructions. You can help the train get safely to the station. I will show you a number. You must tell me what, the num what number comes before it and what number comes after it. If you give me the right answers, the train will be safe. That sounds like a threat. Okay. Begin the number train. How many questions? Uh, let's just do five. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here's the number train. <laughs> what comes before? Is it literally just 18? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I guess... I guess this is the train made it safely to the station. We're going to have to crash one of these deliberately, I think. I'm glad I only chose five. Uh, this is going to be a little tedious. Oof. Train number two is safely on its way. Train number three is pulling up. I'm crashing train number five. I've decided. The train made it safely to the station. All right, what do we got? Train number four. You're the last lucky one. Here comes tray number five. Seven, eighty-eight, ninety. Oh, won't let me crash the train. It'll only let me keep trying until I get it right. That's a shame. <laughs> they have safety measures in place. I should be an engineer. Uh, moving on. <laughs> uh, what time have we got? Okay, 8.50. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, let's have a look at Story Writer, because this is really fun. Uh, this is a disc that I found creative writing projects on. No, sadly not. Uh, okay, so like I said, I found creative writing projects on this. Story Writer is uh, it's a word processing program, and these are these are actual students' stories on this. It's going to be amazing. Fancy title screen. Nineteen eighty two. My name is Story Writer. Okay, my name is Jeff. Hello. Kids love with the computer shows them their name. Okay. So we're gonna load these stories one by one. I've got a listing here that I printed out earlier. Uh, because, uh, the cartridge I'm using to load this, uh, doesn't let you read the content. So I have to say, no, I don't want to see the directory. Uh, I have to know ahead of time, but I do know ahead of time because I made a note. 
So Amanda and Melissa. All right, let's read Amanda and Melissa's creative writing project. Uh, and the rabbit, and dragon the rabbit, and we the dragon estra to know, rest, ret, and no dragon bad d. All right, that's a good one. That's just captivating stuff. Uh, the title is The Dragon Rat It uh, by Amanda and Melissa. So excellent work, young ladies. <laughs> uh, let's see what's next. I'm using disk. I do not want to see the directory. The next one is... What do David and Michael have to say to express their creativity? File not found. Am I spelling that wrong? Let me try that again. Load your story. Using disk. I don't want to see the directory. David. Michael. Whoops. Maybe that's what I did. Zero. Ah, there we go. Let's see what David and Michael have to say for themselves. Uh, Amy was a man and Quarai a squirrel and the squirrel ripe to a ball. The squirrel ran on the ship and a spider catch a squirrel to a reindeer, a rabbit. Kai Caboose Casty, and he ate some. It started to rain. He was in the tree. It was Moradat. All right. <laughs> uh, that was uh, Baseball by David Michael. Uh, thank you, David Michael, for this story about baseball. What's next? Uh, I would love to track down these kids uh, <laughs> who are older than me, guaranteed. Uh, see what they're up to this this uh, in the year 2023. Uh, see if they're still writers. I don't want to see the directory. The next one is Jordan and Joe. Whoops. And Joe. Let's see what Jordan and Joe came up with. I saw a bunny. He was at Carrot and he finished. He was off to play. Okay, that's LSB Bunny by Joe Jordan. <laughs> uh, these are good. I wonder how they'd feel about us uh, on a live stream roasting their uh, childhood creative writing projects. I think that's hilarious. So next we have Laura, Heather. What's this one about? A little mouse. He was hey, he was vi very happy in his house. He was walking, ate a beet. He was eating an apple. He took a snooze, snore, 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 zzz, heard a sound. He got ip, helped a road. He thought it was an elephant, but it was a monkey. His name was Parrot. That's a plot twist. Wow. Uh, let's see this title scroll by again. Uh, the man over 
Spass by Laura Heather. <laughs> uh, what do we got next? Honestly, I do think these are amazing. Uh, I I have no idea. Uh, it it seems to be just a plain old word processor when you start. Uh, it, it has to have been a project of some kind involving animals. Uh, I don't know what the specifics are. I haven't looked at all of these. I'm actually reading most of these for the first time with you. Yeah, we'll write a story about a rabbit and a mouse or something. Uh, <laughs> so the next story is uh, Melissa Amanda. Let's see. And Kitten and Dog, the Monkey, a Doll, the Lion, Clo, Kazin, the Hotel, and Peter Corn Flowers and Gimming Himmel Tip Wolf Rain, and Out, Outis Foul Home, Fricket Rain, and Rivig Rainbow, Leith Kevin. And umpt de mump and ham elephant baby and hamag one. Uh, that was kitten and dog. Kitten and dog by Melissa and Amanda, everyone. Uh, Melissa's done quite a few of these, actually. What's next? Uh, we got Melissa and Mike doing a collaboration here. Let's see what they came up with. So one day Bunny went to the Easter. Mike, your your skills as an as an editor are are really shining through in the, in the first sentence. So one day Bunny went to the Easter egg hunt in the park. He found most of the eggs. He had fun. He won a prize. Then he came home. He panted some eggs. He had fun. Then he was finished. On Easter night, when everybody was sleeping, he hid eggs all over the school. Mrs. Patton. <laughs> uh, Melissa and Mike came up with a, a real good one here. Uh, it must be Easter themed. There are a lot of bunnies. YTT by Michael M. <laughs> uh, young Rathologic in the park hunting for eggs. No, they are they are just primary school students, and uh, there is no spell check in this. This is purely their own efforts. Next, Melissa and Amanda again. Uh, they must, are they? Oh, I see, I see. They're spelled differently. They're two different Melissas. This is Melissa with two L's and one S, and the other was Melissa with one L and two S's. Unless I did the other one first, in which case we'll go find the other one. Okay, so we've seen this one. Oh, no, this is different. This is different. Uh, and kitten and dog, the monkey, a doll, the lion, clo, and Peter corn flowers, and gim himmel. It's very similar, though. I think they're just having fun. Uh, we're not going to read that again. It was too hard on my brain. Uh, next, let's see what. Uh, Misty has to say. Misty, what do you got for us? One morning, the bunny went to has some camby and a beautiful princess, and the name was Mrs. Patton Walzak, and he 
at like a peg, son. She laughed the hoss, and she never saw him again, and they never saw each other again. Uh, Misty Lee Miller here with a, another banger about uh, a bunny who et like a peg. Uh, and I... <laughs> that spelling a beautiful princess is the best thing ever. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Patton Walzak has to have been the teacher. Uh, there was a Mrs. Patton mentioned in one of the others, right? So yeah, this is the Esther Bunny and Ags by Misty Lee Miller. Uh, so I'm going to try and find out for the next stream what happened to uh, Mrs. Patton Walzak. Maybe I'll try and get a hold of her because uh, this is amazing. Uh, what's next? What's next? From the disc. I don't want to see the directory. The next one is called Nicole Mike. So let's see if it was a fluke that uh, Melissa in Mike's story, uh, or if Mike really is bringing his A-game to these stories. Nope. Nope. Sorry. Big Day, my pet monster, I tie Burton Bay. Mig, blah, 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 blah. They're just typing. All right. Uh, my pet monster was great, by the way. Uh, I watched that when I was a kid. I assume that's what they're talking about. Uh, Rose Jennifer. What do we got? <laughs> you might be able to. Uh... Okay. I saw a rabbit. It was wit. Has is were blue as he hopped by. He dropped his basket. He went to get in. Okay. This is called I saw a rabbit. By Rosa. They're all about rabbit. It has to be an Easter project, right? No, see, I thought that too at first, Dragon Mech. Uh, but the, the checksums are, are correct. So there's no corruption whatsoever. Uh, that's literally just kids banging along on a keyboard. No spell check. They don't know how to spell. They don't know how to type. Uh, I don't know if you've ever typed on a Commodore 64 before, but you'll notice me making mistakes all the time because they're actually really hard to type on. Uh, you can't type quickly on them. They're very stiff keys. Uh, and they're not, uh, they're not clicky clacky keyboards. Uh, they're not great. Uh, someone actually did a Kickstarter a little while back for uh, a new mechanical keyboard for Commodore 64s, but I was not going to spend like $250 to get a mechanical keyboard for this. This thing's using an original keyboard. Uh, they're just not super quick to type on. Uh, they're a little bit difficult. And you have to remember it in the mid 80s, kids did not have typing skills. Like they're, It's not like today where every kid knows how to type. Uh, it's very, very different. Okay. Let's see. Disk. Don't want to see the directory. Uh, what's the story name? Next one is just Sandy. And I think this is... Oh, no, there's one more after this. This is our second last story. Let's see. Oh, this is a good one. One Halloween day. Okay. They're just, uh, they're just holidays. Uh, one Halloween day, I was going trick-or-treating when a 10-foot monster came toward me. I screamed before I could run. He caught me. He gave me some candy, and then he brought me home. My mommy yelled and jumped right out of her clothes. Ah, she sighed. What in the name is that? <laughs> it's a monster, Mom. What? It's a monster. Oh, my God, she sighed. I told her the story about him. Okay, you can have him. 
Besides, he's cute. Tanks, Mom. Oh, what should I call him? I got an idea. What is it, Mom? Well, you get some candy with him. I'll think of a name for him, right? You little momchkin, right? Ah, shame on you. Wah, ah, I'm gonna, I'm going crazy. Okay, okay, gust a sec. What fawns? Yes, just the perfect name. Fawns, go on trick-or-treating now. Bye, the end. This one's good too. Uh, this is called The Friend Ye Monster by Sandy Amaral. Thanks, Sandy. Write in again. Last one. VG. Amy was a man. Uh, this is actually the same as one of the other ones. And uh, Quarai, I squirrel, and the squirrel, a ball. The squirrel ran, and the ship, and the spider catch a squirrel. TMI, reindeer, a rabbit, caboose, casty, and he ate some. It started to rain. He was in the tree. It was Moradat. Uh-huh. Pretty good, though, right? It's a good one. Uh, okay, so that's that's all the stories we have tonight, folks. Uh, this has been Story Writer Time with Jeff uh, and the kids of Lorne Avenue Public School of London, Ontario. Uh, circa 1983, maybe? I don't know. Maybe we'll get a hold of uh, that teacher. We'll see, see if we can look her up. Uh, maybe I can track her down. We'll find out. Wow. Okay, so uh, yeah, that was Story Writer. Good times. Goodbye. What's next? Uh, what else do we got here? Go up. Uh, we got 20 minutes, so let's try and find some good, uh, some good promising ones here. We've got, these are discs. What's on this one? Okay, Storybook Builder. Looks like we've got, uh, Dragon Wario and Super Mario. Warn symbols. Yeah, maybe we'll look at warning symbols. That could be fun, too. But I really want to see what this one is. Uh, I actually have seen this. Yeah. This is definitely off of this disc here. Uh, someone loved Nintendo. So Josh Ryan in Super Mario World. Uh, okay. Okay. Storybook Writer, written by Mark Brown and Larry Walzak for the London Board of Education. Construct a picture and a story to go with it. The page can be saved on disk with other pages to form an electronic storybook. Fun. Uh, let's read a story. Uh, I've got to open up. Hang on. Let me get the disk image here. So that I know what file name to type. Because again, uh, with the cartridge I'm using here, I can't uh, I can't list the directories from inside a program. Uh, it's, it doesn't. It tries to convince it that it's a cartridge. Uh, so we have to do some workarounds. Okay. So let's see. Uh, Maybe I can do, let's see if we can uh, get a directory listing. It may just, yeah, it just freezes. Oh no, we got one. Okay, this one worked. 
Okay, okay. So we got Dragon Wario. Uh, two of those. We got Super Mario W, and we got Ryan. Uh, let's just see Ryan first. I'm curious about what Ryan is. Ooh. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Uh, ah, shoot. No story called Super Mario. All right. Uh, let's see the directory again. I want to see the Mario one. Super Mario W, all capital letters. Okay. Okay. Try that again. I was probably holding shift on the space. Which would be a different character on the Commodore 64. Okay, so Super Space Mario Space W. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, that's not too bad. Uh, that's a pretty good Super Mario. Um, there's no story to go with it, um, but the picture's there. That's great. Um, okay, let's get one of these dragon warriors up. They look like copies of each other. Dragon Wario. Okay. <laughs> this one's pretty good, too. Uh, the helicopter is a great touch. I think I remember a helicopter from the last time I played Dragon Warrior. Good times, good times. All right. <laughs> uh, that's great. That was five. Is there anything on this one? Yeah, where's where's uh, the warn symbols? Let's see what that's about. Warning symbols. Is it just going to educate us about the things under the sink that we shouldn't drink? Yep, that's literally what it's going to be. Okay, corrosive, poison, flammable, explosive. These are actually really good. Safe or unsafe? Uh, that's not safe. We can't eat that. Safe or unsafe? Uh, I guess that's unsafe. Safe or unsafe? Well, it depends on how old it is, uh, but I'm going to go with safe. Safe or unsafe? No way. That could catch on fire. That could catch on fire. That's not safe. Let mom and dad handle that. There's a lot of flammable stuff, isn't there? Jam. <laughs> uh, that's safe, I guess. Mm, it kind of looks like jam, but I don't think we're supposed to eat that one. How many of these are there? That will melt you. I always thought the corrosive symbol was the scariest one. Because I pictured it happening like instantaneously. Uh, may, I mean, maybe for some it does, but uh, not, not for the stuff you keep under your sink, I guess. How many of these is it going to ask us about? It's just going to go forever. Safe or unsafe? Is this supposed to be dog bones? I got to be careful what I say or I'll wake mine up. Uh, T-R-E-A-T-S is. Uh, I guess it's safe, but 
You're not supposed to eat it. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just the dog's bones is what it is. They're not dog bones, they're the dog's bones. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it is like really going for this. Um oh yeah, yeah, that's just uh that was dad's uh jar of magnesium that he keeps in the cupboard. Uh okay, okay. This is just going to go forever. Uh I'm going to pick something else cuz I think we've mastered our warning symbols. Uh okay. Word twister. Word twister sounds fun. Ooh. Good stuff. Would I like instructions? I am not sure I would like instructions. But I guess each puzzle is a series of three clues. Once you have the answer to the first clue, the other two use the same letters as the first, but in a different order. OK. Small body of water. OK. Yeah, you could choke on an asterisk. Wrong. Oh, a pool. Come on. I guess a lake is a big body of water. A game. Uh, okay, so it's one letter different and maybe rearranged. Well, also, pool is also a game. I'm typing pool again. <laughs> Polo. Okay, okay. A doubling of rope. Uh, a doubling of rope. What does that mean? Oh, a loop. Okay, okay. Thanks, Dragon Mech. Oh, and there's sound in this one. That was a sound effect. Did we hear that? Uh, yeah, I'd love another puzzle. To challenge. Uh, insult. Um, yeah, we got a little zip noise. To challenge? Four-letter word for to challenge. Um, yell. <laughs> dare. It's to dare. Okay, beloved. Uh, okay. Well, that's going to be dear. Pew! To peruse. To read. All right. Hooray! Let's do another puzzle. I'm loving that there's sound in this one. A hen or a chicken? Uh, a hen or a chicken? Just a bird? Cluck. What does it want from me? Oh, fowl. Okay. Well, hen or chicken, come on, that's, that's more specific than fowl. Glide as in stream... Glide is in stream. Flow. An animal. Okay. I mean, I guess that's word twister. I'm I'm loving the novelty of there being sound effects in this one. Uh, we've got ten minutes left. What are we going to do? Uh, we've done pretty much all of them uh, that sound interesting. I don't think thermometer is good. I have a ton more discs to go through. Uh, for the last 10 minutes, I'm going to put on an actual an actual game for you guys. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um... Let's do a 
saucer attack. We're doing saucer attack. I played this one as a kid. It's dumb. Uh, flying saucers are attacking the White House. Sorry, I, I just needed some sound, so I picked something with sound. Uh, <laughs> they had no budget for sound in uh, the London School Board. So here's how this works. Uh, we're going to zap. We're going to zap the flying saucers. It's really hard, though, because they don't stand still. Or at least they do, but only after you've shot. Ah, uh, missed him. We're going to try and destroy all the stuff. I have definitely played Xevious. That should have hit him. Come on. Yeah, Xevious is great. It's a classic. Uh, and there's definitely a version of it for the Commodore 64. In Xebius? Yeah, it may even be on uh, my little cartridge here. We could play Xevious next week. No, stop. We're going to start blasting things if I'm not careful. Get out of here. Come on, that was a hit. So eventually what happens is they start they start blasting the monuments, uh, which is pretty fun. Get out of here, you aliens. No! <laughs> I never liked that thing anyway. Although, Congress is right there, come on. Uh, anyway. <laughs> This is saucer attack. It's extremely dumb. Uh, but it has sound, which is fun. This and Word Twister. Who knew? Come on. No, that one's landing. We don't want that. Ah. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, they're just waiting for for uh their opportunity now that the the space force isn't ready. Uh it's going to happen. But uh yeah, that's that's what it is. We should all have a space force. Uh, and it'll prevent all sorts of horrible things from happening. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's saucer attack. What else we got? Uh, do I have Xevious on here? No, no Xevious. Uh, I've gone through most of my, my discs. 
Uh, we Are Stardust is pretty cool. This is actually a new game. As in, it came out in 2022. People are still making games for the Commodore 64. Last week I played one that was uh, from 2021. Uh, and I'll probably just show you the intro from this because uh, it's incredible what people are doing with the Commodore 64 these days. Pretty good, right? And then you got a little Monster Energy logo for some reason while it loads. Uh, yeah. 2022, okay. So yeah, you jump over the low things. You try to grab the money. You have to, oh, you have to blast through the walls. Duck under those things. Pretty cool. It's a good game. Whoops. But the music's great. Yeah, the music's amazing. your money, smash the stuff. But uh, this is one of the reasons the Commodore 64 is so prized. The sound chip on it is absolutely incredible. The sound people can get out of it. This is an original sound chip in uh, my Commodore 64. They do make clones these days, uh, but they don't sound as good. Anyway, that's uh, We Are Stardust, which is really fun. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out. Uh, this has been a fun night of digital archaeology, uh, going through all the software that I've archived. Uh, most of the stuff you saw tonight, I guarantee no one has seen since, like, 1989, uh, which is really neat. Uh, I'm going to be... Uh, saving all that so that it doesn't decay like the physical discs that it's on. And in the meantime, I'm going to try and get a hold of some of the coders that actually worked on this stuff. Uh, I'm going to see if they're still working in the industry, if they're still around, uh, if they're still alive, uh, who knows. Uh, I'm also going to try and figure out what happened to that teacher who was doing those creative writing projects with the kids about the rabbits and the monsters and the squirrels. So it should be, it should be interesting. Uh, and I'm going to keep going through my discs. Cause like I said, I have like, I rescued like a ridiculous collection of these things from that school. Uh, and I've I barely scratched the surface uh, with uh, pulling it all off the discs and making backup copies. So it'll be really fun to keep going through this stuff. Uh, hopefully more games that we find have sound. Uh, I think only one of those educational games tonight did, uh, which is really unfortunate. But uh, hopefully my voice wasn't too grating uh, and you got some sweet tunes at the end. Anyway, uh, I'm Jeff. I play old and retro games. We've been playing on a real Commodore 64 tonight. 
We've been playing games from the 80s. No one has seen in decades. And I'm doing this all for a really good cause. I raise money every year, year round for Extra Life which is an organization that connects gamers with their local Children's Miracle Network hospitals. Mine is the Toronto Hospital for Sick Children. It's a really great cause. If you check out my link down below, you can go to my fundraising page. Not a lot of details on it right now, but you can see my entire 24-hour marathon stream from 2022, which we just had a few months ago in November. Uh, Extra Life culminates every year in a 24-hour gaming marathon. I stream mine every year. This will be my seventh year doing it. It's an amazing cause. Everything you donate goes directly to the Hospital for Sick Children. Nothing goes to Extra Life unless you choose to give them a little extra to run this thing. It's amazing. It's tax deductible. What can I say? Please give generously. I'll be streaming here every week. Uh, just weekly for now, Sunday evenings, but we'll see what my schedule looks like going forward. Usually I tend to ramp that up to twice a week when we get closer to my marathon in the fall, but it will be a good time and I hope you will all be sticking around to see it. So thanks everyone for coming out tonight. This was a blast and we will see you next time. Talk to you later, folks.